I have too many things to talk about today. Most importantly, I'm going to tell you why the internet has been on Jay's neck in the past few days. I swear, I was left speechless, and I don't even know what to think anymore. But let's start with things that must be said first. The YouTube channel Sojong has been in the spotlight a lot lately, and it's not for good reasons. But I mean, who am I to judge, right? Anyway, netizens aren't happy this time because the channel Sojong has been uploading videos targeting celebrities and K-pop idols and blatantly defaming them with claims that are extremely harmful. They started the dating rumors for Taehyung, Jungkook, and Namjoon, and they also started the rumor that Taehyung caused a terrible accident. They're being sued for that very reason, but it looks like there's more. The channel posted a video recently in which they body shamed Kepler's Kim Taehyun. After watching the video, many fans and netizens came together to defend her, as we all should. Their words of support and encouragement showed just how much they care for Taehyun, and it warmed my heart. A comment on Seo Jung's YouTube channel read, Taehyun's body and weight are perfectly healthy right now, and I do not want anyone to make comments on it. Taehyun is still a child. She's still growing. She's beautiful right now. Is it really necessary to say things like this about her body? But while this is happening, Taehyun is booked, busy, and unbothered. Kepler's debut did extremely well, as they broke the record for the highest first day sales of any girl group debut album in Hanto history by selling a total of 150,153 copies on the first day alone. They also have the second highest first week sales of any girl group debut album in Hanto's charts history. The success doesn't stop there, as Taehyun was chosen as the new MC of SBS's MTV's The Show. Our girl is glowing, and I hope she didn't see those nasty body shaming comments. Now this, guys. Solmi has officially left Daya. To be honest, we've all known this for quite a while. This is just confirmation. For a bit of background, back in August of 2019, Solmi was involved in some baseless rumors that were cleared up quickly. Then nobody heard from her for a while until she went live on Instagram crying and explaining that the company had banned her from using social media and haven't given her any feedback since the scandal. After some time, Daya dropped the teasers for Flowers 4 Seasons and people couldn't help but notice that Somi and Taeyeon were missing. Somi was even missing from the Daya 6 year celebration announcement, so what was happening? Well, in November of last year, Somi made her debut as a BJ under the name Tomi for Panda TV. It seems like this is what prompted the company to finally speak out on her situation. On January 9th, MBK Entertainment announced that Somi has left Daya after the termination of her contract for personal health reasons. The termination apparently happened long before the announcement was made. She was obviously kicked out. Who are they fooling? I wish her all the best though. She deserves better. Speaking of unexpected and suspicious breaks, Yuehua Entertainment announced that Everglow's Yiden will be absent from the group's activities. According to the agency, Yiden will be returning to China and staying there from mid-January to the end of February. Her taking a hiatus because she's going to China to visit her family sounds reasonable enough, right? Well, netizens think it's far from the truth, and here's the reason why. On January 2nd, all members of Everglow attended a fan meet to promote their album. At the event, the members greeted their fans and wished them a happy new year. While the other members bowed down in front of their fans on their hands and knees in the traditional Korean fashion, Yiden refrained from bowing. Instead, she wished happy new year in the traditional Chinese way of greeting by putting one's hands together. And while Chinese people are praising her for setting a good example for other Chinese idols promoting overseas, Korean netizens think that she was being too prideful and disrespectful. So due to this turning into a controversy, netizens think that the agency is making Yiden stay out of the public eye until everything calms down. It's also possible that the company may have been planning to have her return to China to pursue a career in her home country from the beginning, and this just sped up the process. This is not confirmed, of course, but at this point, nothing could surprise me anymore. I know you're probably tired hearing about Day 6's J, but it's not my fault, okay? I personally feel super weird about this whole thing because here I was rooting for him one day, and the next day he made me question everything I said. Jay did a live stream where he said some really disgusting stuff about his now, I guess, former friend Jamie, aka Jimin Park. He used the word thought to describe Jamie, and I don't think I have to explain why that's wrong. In the short clip, Jay says, Okay, now that I'm not in K-pop anymore, I could say this. Why Jamie trying to be a thought? He then adds, That's right, I said it, tell her. It's giving 14-year-old boy edgy humor, if you ask me. But nevertheless, fans tried to give him the benefit of the doubt, saying that it was probably an inside joke between them and that he didn't mean any harm by it. But this theory was put to rest when Jamie herself responded to the comments. In a now deleted tweet, she wrote, Just remember how much I cared about you even before you were in your last company and how many times I asked if you were alright? I prayed for you. Your questions were like mine. It's really sad. Soon after, she tweeted, I hate that we as women have to be subjected to men's humor to appease incels on the internet, period. She really tells it like it is. The 
these comments become even more disturbing when we're reminded that not only has Jamie been Jay's long friend, but she's also spoken about how much he's been harassed and sexualized. K-pop stands empathized with Jamie's discomfort and anger and had a lot to say about the situation in general. A Twitter user said, Now that I'm not in K-pop anymore, what, so you've been waiting to be out of K-pop so you can out your misogynistic self? Jay has spoken about wanting to distance himself from the K-pop industry for a few months now, and while it's understandable, did he have to call his friend a derogatory term to prove that he's not like other idols? Right after Jamie's tweets and getting attacked for his comments, Jay finally apologized to Jamie. Yes, before you ask, it was with a notes app apology posted on Twitter. Jay claimed that he thought his comments were only friendly banter, and he did not mean to disrespect Jamie. Moreover, he stated that he got confused between thought and baddie, and assumed both meant the same. Now let's bring out some receipts. First, he once posted a screenshot of a conversation with his friend where he was called with the same term he called Jamie, and based on his response, everyone can tell he knew that the meaning of the word was negative. Secondly, what he said next on the live stream seemed to imply that he thought Jamie might not be happy with his words. He said, she's going to call me and be like, why did you call me this? I can't believe she's like a little sister to me. Please lawyers, don't call me. While this whole issue came as a surprise to many, fans and non-fans have started to notice red flags for a while. One of them was an old episode of an old ASC episode which featured Stray Kids Bang Chan, where Jamie revealed that Bang Chan had apparently been scared of Jay when he was a trainee. She didn't give details on the reason why, but seeing how uncomfortable Chan looked and the fact that the two are not close despite Chan being friends with the entire industry is a big red flag on its own. Some people say that Jay bung Chan in the past or made fun of him, but obviously we cannot confirm this in any way, but the clip surely gives off strange vibes. Other fans pointed out that Jay doesn't really respect his bandmates. Not only did he call the band that he's been a part of for seven years inauthentic, but he also called Yong Kei and Song Jin nicknames that they weren't comfortable with. I simply cannot wrap my head around his behavior. Like, what's happening? Have some of us been colorblind this whole time while he was a walking red flag, or is he just trying to cope with the recent changes in his life by acting up? Please, if you have more info, let me know. Okay, what's with people thinking that Winter is a horrible person when they have no reasons to believe so? On top of all the baseless accusations that she's dealt with for the past year, a new one has popped up recently. Netizens on online forums found an old Ask FM account belonging to someone by the name of Gi Min Jung, which is Winter's full legal name. Not only that, but Winter and the owner of the account were both born in 2001, so this led Netizens to believe that this was an account Winter used before her debut. Her having an Ask FM wasn't the problem, but the answers she allegedly shared caused quite a stir as they were deemed as inappropriate. The answers involved quite a lot of cursing, and one of them expressed that they would like to see Kai show more skin. Winter stayed quiet during the entire controversy, but things ended up working out in the end. The actual owner of the account came forward and said that though they have the same name and were born in the same year, she didn't know Winter personally. As proof, she posted a yearbook and her resident ID card and asked for both Winter and her to be left alone by the commenters. She even threatened them with a lawsuit saying, do not speak ill of me and Winter. All malicious posts and comments will be collected and used in the court of law. I will not tolerate this anymore. How is a person that doesn't even know Winter protecting her better than her actual company? How does that make sense? Tell me your thoughts in the comments. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.